Hey, what is up? My name is Matt Workman. I have been wanting to, for a very long time, be able to track me playing those drums. I feel like I have reached the point where I have a one-to-one -one digital double of that. And I just wanted to take this time now to kind of document, you know, how, how that was possible and, and what my setup is now, because it's probably going to keep changing. So the very first thing with tracking drums, right? Other than the person, right? We've, we've tracked people. I've done a lot of work with getting the, the human and the metahuman to look good, right? But what do we do for drums? The number one thing is, of course, the drumsticks. Number one, this is number one. I don't know if you can see the number. This is number two here. So these are the most difficult thing about this, right? These move really fast and you only have so much room to put markers on them, these little dots. If you put them on the bottom or the side, they're gonna get ripped off immediately when you're playing. So I only have them on like one axis, which is like exactly how you're not supposed to put markers on props. But with a drumstick, performance takes priority. You need four markers to track any object. And this is the only way that I could think of of putting four markers on the sticks. The next thing that I decided to do was track each individual like object or instrument that I was going to hit with the sticks. So when I hit the symbol, I have actually tracked the symbol. I have markers on the symbol. When I hit it, it moves and I track that movement and it gives the virtual version a, a nice feeling. Same thing with the snare drum. While it's subtle, when I hit the snare drum hard enough or from a certain angle, the snare drum actually moves a little bit, which is probably imperceivable when you're just watching it casually, but it's there and it looks a little bit stiff if the snare drum doesn't move at all. Uh, and lastly, for this set, because I wanted to go minimal, this is like, you know, just, just starting out here, I also tracked the hi-hat, and the hi-hat moves up and down. When you hit it, it moves too. And so when I play with the real-world drumsticks, it hits the real-world objects, and they all move together. And I'm tracking basically everything that, that moves. So this is Vicon Shogun that you're seeing right now, and this software is going to manage all of the motion capture cameras and it's also going to manage the construction, which is basically taking like these little images of dots that it's seeing and turning those into 3D spheres in space. And from there, it can either track a prop or it can try to fit like a human skeleton inside of those 3D spheres. That's what's happening in that point cloud, right? Put a human in there. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff has to happen to make that work. And then from there, I send that data to Unreal Engine. We have retargeted in Shogun. We do the retargeting in this program, which is really nice. It does not require Motion Builder. And it's live. You could live stream it at this quality. I don't do any cleanup so far. Anyway, we send the skeleton of the MetaHuman basically to Unreal Engine, and then we send the tracked positions of all the drumsticks. And I basically put in, inside of those tracked like locators or whatever you want to think of transforms, I basically put in 3D versions of my real world drums and cymbals. So that was the first step. And then I did a couple play tests just to see like, does it look like I'm hitting a drum? Are the sticks in my hands? And what does it look like overall? So that was the first test. Uh, I think it came out pretty well, but a little flat. Even though the cymbals were moving and the drums did move like a little bit, I wanted to give it a little bit of extra because, you know, this is a, a virtual world. We can do kind of whatever I want. Uh, most electronic instruments, you can plug them into the computer and you can connect the instrument directly to Unreal Engine using MIDI. Uh, and I've been doing that for, for a couple of years now. And so basically every time I hit one of the drums or the cymbals, it's gonna send Unreal Engine a note number. I think the bass is like 39 or something like that. So it's like 39, 39, 39, 39. And what I can do from there is trigger the virtual drums to do something. So what I have set up today, which I'm pretty happy with, is that when I hit the bass drum, it kind of glows and kind of like gets bigger and like kind of you know reacts like it was a subwoofer kind of. And then same thing with the snare drum. And what's nice about MIDI, even though it's pretty basic, it does report velocity. It reports how hard you've basically hit the drum. So when I hit it very softly, it only glows a little bit and it only moves a little bit. But then when I hit it really hard, it gets even bigger, right? So the dynamics are being kind of like visualized. One, you can tell 
like when the drum's being hit, but you can also tell how hard it was hit. And I didn't go overboard and have like explosions and whatnot. I, I've done that before in the past with my like mixed reality drumming stuff. Um, and I'll probably go in that direction eventually. But right now I wanted to be like you know, kind of minimal and just kind of like you know show it and glow it a little bit. So that has been my journey to get to being basically a virtual musician. And what I basically have now is a virtual instrument, right? And I mean that in like many, on many levels, right? It's not only just like I, you know, interact with that physical interface over there, if you want to think about it that way. It's basically a keyboard, but in the shape of a drum set. That makes, you know, digital sound that we can put together and then on top of that, I'm also digitally puppeting this metahuman, right? And I'm also digitally puppeting the physical drums because they're playing part of it. So this, this whole thing is one big virtual instrument that has sound and it also has a visual aspect. And it has a very satisfying real world component. So it's not like I'm like programming and keyframing, nothing against that, I do plenty of that too. But like I am physically moving my body and it, and it feels good to do that and it then gets reflected digitally. I know this is obvious, but like I, I'm putting it together for myself still that this is all just one big instrument that has a virtual visual side to it and the audio as well. I, I'm kind of terrible at playing the drums with these on there. It's very awkward. It's um, I'm, it's something I'm gonna have to get used to. You, you have to hold the sticks very precisely so they don't spin and I'm wearing gloves and a mocap suit and like all this other stuff. So like if my drumming is a little off, one, I'm not a professional drummer, but it's also like, it's, it's gonna take me months to be able to play with these properly. Um, but I'm very happy with how it looks, how it sounds, and like most importantly, and I think musicians and, and actors and performers can realize this, how it, how it feels to do it. it, it well, I just communicated that it's, it's a little bit wonky. I need to learn this kind of new instrument, basically. I need to be familiar with the instrument. It feels good to play which is nice, it feels satisfying. And uh, if you watch any of my other demos when I'm like walking on my treadmill or doing anything, dancing and flipping and stuff, it's fun and, it's, and it feels good to do. And I think that that's important moving forward because if, it doesn't, if it's not fun to do and if it's not real time and it takes too long, a lot of people aren't gonna wanna do it, right? A lot of musicians, a lot of us wanna play live. Do it live right then and there and I'm done, that's it. So like when I'm doing a session in here, but I basically get suited up, hop on my drum set and I just play for an hour. I'm recording the whole time and, and I'm done, you know? And if you wanna go even further, which I think is pretty cool with this, is that you can record the whole thing. I haven't been showing recording, but you just hit record. You can record it on the Shogun side or you can record it on the Unreal Engine side. And so you're recording Obviously, your whole performance in 3D. And you can do a lot with that. So you have your whole body, how you performed, and you also have the drums tracked now. So you, you're recording like the whole performance, pretty much. How the, you're recording how your cymbal was moving that day, you know, when you hit it, when you performed it that way, and it's all synchronized with music. You could do stuff with that. You could put it in like a VR video game. You could make it like an AR Snapchat filter. You could make it an NFT or whatever. Whatever you want to do with this stuff, it's there. And I... I, I'm not, I'm not like the, I'm not a great performer. I am an Unreal Engine, like, virtual production developer, whatever that is. Um, so, like, I'm just testing this stuff, and I, I'm going to make the stuff that I make, but I, I am excited to see what other people who are actually good or passionate and full-time, full-time musicians using this, full-time dancers, right? We're, we're going to see what happens with all this. You know, there's companies like Wave and uh, a couple more that you'll definitely see uh, when it comes to the virtual performances. But I'm interested on the indie level too. Well, this is not like affordable for most people. Th this is achievable for some, especially like a small company. Like this, this setup costs what it would be to have like, you know, one professional camera, a couple professional lights and a computer. It's just, this is like kind of like the virtual version of it. Okay, so that wraps it up for this video. 
I'll see you on the next one. Peace.